Ashiatsu massage is an incredibly luxurious and effective deep tissue massage where the therapist will be using their feet instead of their hands as the primary tool to apply the massage techniques onto the client's body. This massage oftentimes begins with a seated back routine, which is intended to be a warm up. It's not as deep of a pressure as when the therapist is standing and applying, applying their full body weight. So in the seated position, it really is intended to, to warm up the area and get it ready for heavier, deeper pressure once you stand up. Ashiatsu is a word that is actually Japanese, coming from the root words ashi meaning foot and atsu meaning pressure. Together, the word means foot pressure. And I definitely want to give credit where credit is due. And Ruthie Hardy, in my opinion, is the, is the mother of and founder of the technique here in the United States. And as practiced in this video, it really is um, her work and then the work with her partners and colleagues that really uh, kind of brought this to life in the form that you see here today. But it really is intended to be a luxurious deep tissue massage with long, slow strokes. Um, a good ashiatsu therapist needs coordination, balance, in a relaxed manner, and a soft foot with the relaxed toes is actually the best um, tool to use for this style of movement. So it does take quite a bit of practice um, to learn this technique for most massage therapists, particularly if you've never had you know, any other experience in your life where you used your feet um, in this kind of a way. And so if you're learning this for the first time, I definitely encourage you to be patient with yourself, but also practice a lot. You really can learn to feel just as effectively using your feet as the tool as you can when you use your hands as the tool. Uh, there's just as many nerve endings. They're just as sensitive as our hands. And so with practice, um, you really can learn to be a very good and effective massage therapist using this style of technique. Now there are different parts of the foot that you will use in this technique. You can see the ball of the foot and the toes are used. Um, the lateral side of the foot is used often and the heel is used quite a bit as well. And then when you're doing full strokes, it again, it's a whole foot relaxed with toe soft type of technique. So this is a ball of the foot technique that I call the three way upper trap really is focusing on the upper traps, starting with the ball of the foot and then transitioning with that same foot, just flexing your foot and using the heel. You really have to flex your foot quite a bit to uh, accomplish this. And then the other foot comes across also in a flexed position. And when, when it's in this position, it really is sort of the lateral side of the foot that's bringing the pressure. And each one of those three strokes feels different and is effective in a slightly different way. And now, focusing with the heel along the medial border of the scapula and again this is really just intended to be a warm-up for what is to follow and so this is the upper trap with the ball of the foot and the toes and then the heel and the nice flex foot you can notice uh, just the assistance I'm giving myself by holding on to the knee with that hand that just helps with control. 
You really need to have a, a, a good sense of control with your core uh, in order to successfully do these techniques. You really have to be able to hold your core in correctly so that you really have control with your body of your legs and the weight of your legs um, as you, you know, put them on your clients. And this is a nice uh, moonwalk kind of a move. And then just gliding gently down the erector group here all the way down to the sacrum or just above it. Basically however long your legs are compared to your client's back. <laughs> and now we're transitioning to the standing and you notice the bar is there. These days there are quite a bit of options to choose and depending on what classes you take to learn this technique. You could either learn to do it with the bars or some people use slack lines. And then there are others that are even using uh, fabrics similar to the aerial acrobatic fabrics you can see being done by circus artists. They use these fabrics um, tied to the table and then they will support um, themselves and their balance uh, with the fabrics instead of the bars. I'm using bars in this setup and the bars are just directly over the massage table. And here we are with the back standing back routine so this is just gliding along the iliac crest and over the sacrum and then onto the iliac crest on each side and then gliding up the erectors nice soft foot off the tricep and the elbow there and this is just initially a little deeper warm-up than you were in the seated position more glides across the iliac crest and the low back and the hips feels great along that area as you glide up and then off the scapula onto the tricep and off the elbow you can see how you can really go all the way down Really getting a full stroke along the hips there and the low back. And then all the way up to the shoulder again and off the scapula, back off the arm gently. Just added a little bit of a twist on that last uh, version. And now I've turned and am facing down towards their feet now. This allows me to take my whole foot all the way down the erectors and then once the toes hit the iliac crest, you just lift the heel and twist off all the way down the glutes and glute medius, minimus. is a nice QL stroke where your heel really kind of sinks into the QL attachments onto the transverse processes of the spine. And here is the lateral move, lateral side of your foot. You see the medial border of my foot is lifted off the back and the pressure is really on the lateral side of my foot all the way up the erectors. This can be a very deep pressure so you really have to be connected to your client and make sure that it's not too deep and then the heel finds its way into the levator scap there and then off the elbow you can repeat that just 
sink back into the QL. A little bit of a windshield wiper move with your toes there. And then ease up on your pressure as you transition, sink in here before you start moving up towards the head. So you've got your pressure nice, nice in, and then you're just knee stays over the heel the foot shoulder follows the knee so that the pressure stays as consistent as possible as you travel up the spine towards the scapula and the levator scapula with your heel and then back off the scapula into the tricep and off the elbow and this is just a little jostling of the sacrum and hips as i lean way back and apply a massive myofascial style stretch all the way up the erectors. So this isn't crushing the spine, this move really is a myofascial stretching of the erector group on both sides. And you have to make sure that your foot is even, otherwise you're not doing that correctly. So back down uh, to the other side now, so starting off with the arms and hand again. It's a nice way to get the flexors on the forearm onto their attachments to the elbow there. You just get so much deeper and it's such a broad stroke. So if you do it slow enough, it really is a very similar technique to a very deep myofascial massage. This is working on the hands, kind of blocked there, but um, just some hand work as well. And this is just another view of the same back routine. It's nice to get this uh, angle. So here it is again. See the long stroke all the way across the body and then up the erectors on the other side off the scapula onto the triceps and then gently off the elbow and nice all the way up the erector group again off the scapula onto the triceps and off the elbow so the foot really hugs the body but the toes stay as relaxed as possible that's the the proper way to do that. Don't want to grip or dig in with your toes. You really want them just to remain in that hugging kind of position. And then there's the heel finding the QL attachment just above the iliac crest in that pocket there. The attachments onto the transverse processes. Then the lateral foot sinks in. This is really just along the erector group near their spine attachments, but definitely not on the spine, to be off the spine. And then it's just a very slow, slow, deep stroke. Because it's so deep, you want to go slow, you want to be connected with your client, curl your toes away from their head as your heel continues up to the levator, and then the little circles around the levator, off the scapula, onto the tricep, and off the elbow. Again, just nice iliac crest sacrum here. Make sure you're really on the iliac crest and not on the lumbar spine. Finding the QL, a little bit of a windshield wiper with your toe back and forth there. The lateral foot, and then you sink in before you start moving up towards the head. toes curl inward away from their head as the heel continues up into the levator pocket and just get some nice work in there and off to maintain consistent pressure. Again, the knee really follows the heel and 
the shoulders, which are above that, are following as well, all on a consistent line from the shoulder to the knee to the heel so that your pressure stays even and consistent throughout, throughout this entire stroke. Now the body is turned and you are now toes facing down towards the client's feet. Once your toes get to the iliac crest, you lift the heel up and you can slowly twist as you make your way off the iliac crest there, off the hips. Just feels good along all those very tight muscles in the low, that oftentimes affect the low back a great deal, low back pain. Nice way to gently melt through the tension in the hips. And then switching again, you switch feet. This is a very also deep tissue technique here where you're just using the ball of the foot. Twisting your way up the erectors and then off. So since I'm not using the whole foot and it's just the ball of the foot, it really is a much deeper sensation for the receiving client. And so nice, slow uh, way as you travel up the spine is important because it's very deep. This is uh, another view of how my body leans way back and the lateral edge of the foot stays very horizontally even with the shoulders. Heel doesn't lead, toes don't lead, and then gently lift off. Here's a nice closer view of that. See how very straight and even with the shoulders the lateral edge of the foot is. And it is slightly lifted. The pressure is coming from the arch of your foot and then you sit on top of the thoracic spine and then completely lift off. Don't ever step on the cervical spine. Now transitioning to the hips and the legs. There's some really great work that can be done with the hips and the legs in Ashiatsu massage. And so um, oftentimes this style of draping where it's just a towel that's folded that was a triangle fold and then a nice uh, secure tuck to keep everything in place and from moving. But um, this style of drape is used as often in regular massage, but because you can do full body long strokes in Ashiatsu, um, this is an effective way to drape for this style of massage and really using the ball of the foot to work around the greater trochanter of the femur into the hip. Just all the attachments and the glute muscles and the hip muscles, the deep ones and superficial ones. Just a nice way to work that. And then you're gonna slide onto the hamstrings and slowly work your way down, lift off on the popliteal fossa. Pinch the Achilles tendon and kind of work your way up. Nice smooth manner there. A nice twisting around the greater trochanter again. And then you can sink your whole body weight on some clients and they're able to take your whole body weight with that. Toes can clamp onto the Achilles tendon there and then work your way back all the way up to the hip. Now you're gonna switch legs and this is the heel right into the piriformis. So anyone dealing with piriformis syndrome or hip pain or any issues in the hips, this is very effective, very slow windshield wiper kind of lateral back and forth movement of the foot 
Now gently lift off completely as you transition into a medial focused uh, hamstring and adductor group here for the posterior thigh. And then work your way back up. Now this is just a figure four technique. You grab onto the towel and move the leg out to figure four and everything stays nice and secure for the draping. And now you can really work the IT band and the vastus lateralis here. Also the larger hamstrings on the lateral side, the peroneals. A nice way to get into the hips again just in a slightly more effective, slightly deeper as the um, leg is in figure four here. Let's continue to work around that greater trochanter and then leaning way back, being very gentle on the pressure here. It is very sensitive for pretty much everyone that I T-band and then Gently focusing on the peroneals and tibialis anterior. And again, the IT band nice and slow, gentle on the pressure. All the way down towards the lateral knee and then onto the leg portion. Returning that leg, making sure everything's tucked. And now you're working up towards the heart as you should always do with your massage techniques for circulation purposes. And so now we're finishing off this leg routine with strokes that all head up towards the heart. This is focused on the calf, just gastroc and soleus and then up the hamstrings. I like the foot turned out in this position so the heel can head up toward the ischium, ischial tuberosity, to the attachments, the hamstrings there. And you can really lunge into this and apply most of your body weight as you do that. And then here's a long stroke. So starting at the heel and then curving down. This will go all the way up to the shoulder. So that's partially why we have this style of draping so that we can work all the way up the body with one long stroke. It's the nice benefit of using this style of massage technique with your feet you really can cover the whole body in one long stroke so all the way up to the shoulder off the scapula onto the tricep and off the elbow and it starts at the achilles the heel heads up onto the hips and the erector group right at the sacrum there slowly heading up to the shoulder and the scapula and then off the tricep and elbow It's a really effective and nice way to do a very unique stroke that you can't do with your hands necessarily. So this is the other leg and um, just another view. So very much the same strokes on the other side, but this is just a different vantage point. So this is the hamstring. to the calf, clasping on to the Achilles tendon, making your way back up to the hip gently, 
there you are back on so this is the ball of the feet or the foot and you're just finding the greater trochanter and doing nice rotations around it and the pressure can be nice and deep because it is the ball of the foot or the heel and just in a very effective way feels great for the client and this massage technique really is um, just best intended for anyone with larger muscle groups any kind of an athlete um, lots of men really benefit and enjoy this style of massage technique and um, it's just an effective thing to learn if you are able to have the bar set up or the fabrics I mentioned earlier. And you can add this to your toolbox of offerings for your clients. It's a great way to switch up how you use your body as a therapist and again, just a highly effective deep tissue massage for your clients. just a refresher of endangerment sites the back of the knee which is called the popliteal fascia, fascia uh, should always see I always lift up on that once I go over that and so there's really zero pressure and it's just a transitional stroke over that popliteal fossa. Um, any spinous processes any interior neck work careful of armpit hair with men and women and then the other major bony processes or landmarks you don't want to ever put direct weight on uh, with your full body Common beginner mistakes, I would say, um, is digging in, in with your toes too much, not having your toes relaxed enough, and uh, pinching the skin or pulling hair when you're rolling off the body specifically. Anytime you're transitioning or ending a stroke, that is a tendency for beginners. Not using the balance support you have enough, so whether that's bars overhead or fabrics or sack lines um, you really have to learn to use whatever you are using for for balance and uh, once you have control over that your ability to have consistent pressure throughout each stroke will be at its maximum and you'll be more successful in the style of technique when you can do that working too deep too fast is another beginner uh, mistake so I'll just full on, full body weight into the stroke and it's uh, too much. So you really have to learn how to manage your own body weight and the application of it in this style of massage. Uh, stomping around the table, meaning like just large heavy footsteps as you're moving around the table yourself as a therapist is another common beginner mistake. You really want to have confidence in what you're doing from stroke to stroke and your transitions and know that you're not uh, kind of stomping around the table when you're working and then not using enough um, lotion or massage oil so it's a real dry uh, too dry with the feet can be really intense and painful so make sure you are properly applying whatever oil or cream you're using and make you know make sure that it it's, sometimes it, it dries up so you have to reapply there are tricks to do that successfully in this type of massage as well and this is that long stroke from the other side where you're really able to do a full body stroke starting at the heel all the way up 
And now transitioning over to the anterior side, client is now face up on the table. This is a really fantastic, a full, effective stroke of the whole leg here. As you start on the anterior inner medial side of the leg, all the way up to the hip flexor, and then roll that knee back and forth medially and externally as you roll around. This is just very effective way to get the quadricep group and the vastus lateralis and the IT band even as you pull back here. Feels great around the knee attachments as well. So anyone who's, again, very athletic is going to get maximum benefit from this broad, deep pressure uh, on, their, on their leg muscles, their big, strong leg muscles. So the foot is turned out, the heel is in the medial side as you work your way all the way up to the ASIS of the hip. And then um, really focusing on the quadricep group. And now um, you can use your supporting leg to hold the knee from rolling out. And so it maintains the leg rolled in and really gives you access to the IT band successfully in this one. And that's kind of mostly the ball of the foot on the working foot here, but it's also a full-footed technique. So just so aware that it can be very tender along the IT band. And then transitioning, so switching feet and working the tibialis interior and the peroneals. even as you work your way down focusing on your heel is the main tool on that one and you're draping the leg and this is the other side so another vantage point this is the initial you're dragging all the way down and a very relaxed foot is important in this stroke just hugging the leg and as you pull down and then rolling in medial side all the way up all the way up to the ASIS there and then just stopping above the knee as you just focus on that quadricep group and medial thigh and then my t-band just uh feels great to get this done. So you plant that leg beside theirs and the other one comes across so you can firmly put your weight into their quadricep group. Starting at the knee and the knee is following the heel and you're all the way up towards the hip. supporting leg holds their knee up towards the sky as you can now focus in on the IT band once again. So you can see how it can be a full footed up towards the hip and then all the foot down towards the knee, full footed up towards the hip and ball the foot down towards the knee there. And um, all the strokes I'm demonstrating today are what's called uh, one-footed strokes. And there are lots of other things you can learn. And um, two-footed strokes are definitely 
something that happens with Ashiatsu massage techniques. Um, but this video really is just about the one footed strokes and what you can do um, standing on one leg and then using the other on the client. In two footed strokes, what the supporting leg is on the client, so you're literally standing on your client with both your feet. In this hand technique, the supporting leg is gently holding the hand down just so that it doesn't move around and it's not crushing their fingers at all. It's just gently placed there so the weight is in your heel on that standing supporting leg. It's just great techniques to do in the forearm area and then along the biceps and deltoid. Some nice compressions and slow drags. And then up to the chest. Use the compressions here. Just one, two, three. So find the sternum with your foot. Hold there. Compress down. Slide. Compress down. Slide. Compress down. starts at the sternum and then continues to slide down and off the arm. It's a nice way to open up the chest. And then here's some more specific chest work. You can see how I'm holding the arm up and then I'm seated in the stool again and using the heel of my foot now I can take the arm through some range of motion while the heel is firmly planted you're working on pec minor here also pec major So just really effective and specific work that can be done in this technique as well. So this is an example. That technique specifically is an example of some of the more very specific work that can be done, even using your feet. And then some gentle neck work. So it's really it's going to stay um, the posterior neck and then traps here upper traps and the strokes here are, are short and gentle uh, the heel gets planted into the table and the ball of the foot is kind of the main tool you work in the deltoid as well in that position and just holding on to the head be able to just turn it back and forth as you're working these areas and the ball of the foot really is the main tool so you're kind of anchoring your heel into the table so that you have control um, with the ball of your foot and your toes as you work in the posterior neck uh, region. And so finishing up that stroke, I transitioned to this next technique, which is to use really the, the toes into the, the back of the neck here. You're really looking for uh, the lamina groove area, all the muscles in the erector group leading up into the occiput and you're just trying to strip out that area here's some compressions as well if you got value out of watching that today please consider subscribing additionally if you've ever thought about using your forearms uh, forearm massage is very similar to ashiatsu it's a broad heavy stroke so go ahead and click or tap the screen to watch this video on how to best use your forearms